Okay, so uh, we just saw that for cylinders, when we said x squared plus y squared is less than r squared, we got something in three dimensions that went up in z, mm -hmm. in the z direction, because z, this equation didn't say anything about z, so z could be anything. Yeah. As long as x squared plus y squared was less than r squared. Yeah. Now when we switched it, we said x squared plus z squared is less than r, not r to the r, sorry. R that. squared. R squared. Can't write r squared. Ta da! Then we got something that went in, up in the y direction. And yeah. by up, the y direction was across. Yep. It went across because y was unconstrained. What do you think would be the equation for something that was unconstrained in the x direction? Well, a cylinder. I would say y squared plus z squared. X, the x direction goes this way. The x direction goes that way. Yeah. So y squared plus z squared. z squared is less than r squared. Less than r squared. So this should go in the x direction, and that'll give us a third cylinder, and we'll get sort of a, a you know, cross. a cross. Sort, sort of what, sort of the graph, the three D graph. Yeah, sort of like the axes, and that'll be kind of neat. Um, and so we'll see that in a second. And then the last thing I want to show you, and what we're going to print out, is we're going to make a sphere. And then we're going to cut these holes in it. So we're going to have a sphere with all these holes inside of it. Whoa. And then we'll print that out, and that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. Okay? okay. But how do we understand the equation of a sphere? Well, because a sphere seems to be it's just constrained like, in all directions. It's just like a cylinder, but it, at the middle, there's two halves. And you keep, at the middle, it's the longest circle, and the circles keep getting shorter and shorter up, all the way up to the top. That's right. So we got to figure out how how to tell Mathematica to draw a sphere. Well, we, the area formula for a sphere, I think it's pi r squared times height. Um, that's going to be for a cylinder, actually. Oh. Pi r squared gives us the area of a circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for a if you just multiply that by the height, you could imagine that was just circles going up up some height. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to be for that's going to give you the volume of a cylinder. Yeah. But the volume of a sphere, just for fun, is four thirds pi times the radius cubed. Whoa. Whoa. That's Whoa. a little more complicated than pi r squared. A little more complicated than pi r squared, but not super more complicated. No. But um, we have to figure out these constraints. So we're going to have an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a z coordinate. Yeah. What do you think is going to come into come into play here? I think all of them. All of them are going to come into play yeah. somehow. Well, maybe. Well, even, well, we've got. We can't. I don't think we can use this equation anymore because four things are constrained. What's the fourth thing that's constrained? X, X, Y, Z, and radius. Okay, the radius is going to be very important. That's not a constraint. It that's can, that's can be anything. that can be whatever we say it is. So, so we could say the radius is one or ten or whatever. But you're right. All these equations only had two variables that maybe had to this be. One, maybe this one will have three. What do you think it might be? X, Y, and Z. X maybe X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Is less than our squared. Hmm. Hmm. Do you want to go try that? Yeah. yeah. Let's go try. Let's go try that and see what that is. Okay? Yeah.